Let me show you how to do the pendulum transition inside of After Effects. Take a look. So what you need to do is when you open up After Effects, you need to uh, create a composition. I call this the images comp. So for my images comp, I have a width of 2000 pixels, height of 2500 pixels. I have a frame rate of 120 frames per second. And for my images comp, I have it lasting 30 seconds. Now you can have it last as many seconds as you have images. So if I'm gonna have 30 images, I'm gonna last 30 seconds. So now with my images comp, I'm going to upload or import my images that I've saved. So I have two folders that I have saved for, for my images, a coffee folder and a Banff folder like Canada Mountains. And I'm gonna put those into a imported images bin just so I can organize this. You don't have to do that. All right, so here's where all my images are saved. With the images imported, I want to create another composition, new composition. Um, this one, same, same dimensions, 2000 by 2500 pixels, 120 frame rates, but the duration here is going to be one second. I'm going to make sure that this is 001. All right, so with my first composition in, I'm going to rename this composition. I forgot to name it. Uh, composition settings. We're going to name this uh, 01 placeholder. Uh, let's just do 01 image. All right. So this is my first image. All right. And then I'm going to create um, a folder for these two. So I'm going to put a new folder, placeholders, comps. Okay. So um, I'm going to pull this image up. All right, so we have our very first image placeholder. I'm going to put an image in here that I prefer. Let's do this one. All right, with my image comp created, I'm going to go ahead and go into my folder of images that I imported. And I'm going to add, let's do a coffee image. Let's do this one here, right here. And actually, I think that one's sized appropriately already. So let's, let's try this one. Let's try this one. Here we go. So I'm going to bring this in. And you can see that it is um, put into our composition. I'm going to press Command, Option, Shift, G to resize it and it to fit the height of the composition. If you have a different aspect ratio, you can press Command, Shift, Option, H, and it'll just resize it based on the height or width of your image. Um, and it will scale both appropriately uh, so you don't get any wonky looking images. So now I have image one placeholder is coffee. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my images comp and I'm going to add that first one in there. Add a blur effect by uh, selecting the image, going to our effects panel up here on, I think blur sharpen and down to Gaussian blur. So now we have a blur effect that we can add. Let's click on the timeline here, our little clock button. And we are going to the initial set blurriness. Let's just add, let's, let's do 20 pixels, see what that looks like. Um, I think we want more, 100 pixels. There we go. So if you set uh, the blurriness at 100 pixels, make sure the repeat edges pixels is up. If you do not do that, what happens is you get this little, um, let's fit this. You get this little um, edge transparency that we don't want, we want to do repeat edge pixels. And then we're going to, I have, I'm holding option and scrolling on my wheel here to kind of make this a little bit bigger here. So for my screen. So then go ahead, um, let's do a few frames. Um, let's see, let's go 12 frames because in 120 frames per second, we're going 10% uh, of that second. So, so for a 10th of a second, we are going to add another Gaussian blur. We're going to change that to zero now. And we added another keyframe there. So now as it transitions in, it is going to become clear. Go ahead and select those, Command C. And then over here, uh, move the key, um, move the timeline and press Command V. And now we go ahead and keep those new ones selected. Right click it, keyframe assistant. Time reverse keyframes. Now what's going to happen is now for a tenth of a second at the end, it is going to 
stay clear and then blur out. And this is going to add to the transition effect. Now that that image is saved like that, what we want to do is we want to add more copies to this. Now there's a quick and easy way to do that. Um, I have a script file you can download um, and the link here. And what you do is you just pull up the, the script file. Um, let's see here, it's Ender File Scripts. Uh, we're going to run script and what this script is called is, what is it called? I forget. I don't have it in here. True Comp Duplicator? Oh, there it is. So True Comp Duplicator, we're going to duplicate this. So we're going to have how many copies? So we have down here at the bottom, I have one image. I want it to have 30 frames. So we're going to do 29 copies of this. Duplicate the selected. I have the image selected here. Go ahead. And what it, what it should do is it's going to populate new compositions. Press OK. There we go. Let's take a look at our project file. Here we go. Placeholder comps. Here we go. We got all those images. So let's go ahead and select those and bring those in image itself. So what we got to do is we got to create that. Uh, we got to copy these keyframes here. Command C. Bring your timeline all the way to zero. Press Command A to select all of the compositions and then Command V to add all of the blurs. Select off a one. All right, so see, take a look here. Yeah, it looks like we got a blur in and a blur out. Yes. All right, so now press Command A. So once they're all selected, we're going to right click and we're going to um, Key Frame Assistant, Sequence Layers. Now this is going to put them all in order for us. We're not going to ask for an overlap. And now it's going to transition from one to the next. All right, so now that they are all in sequential order, we're going to go ahead and change out these images. This is probably the longest part of the process. So we're going to go into the um, second image placeholder and I am going to change from that. We'll just add this um, image and then with that image selected, I'm going to go command shift option G to resize. And I see that there's a little bit on the edges. So I'm going to press command shift option H and there we go. We got it resized and centered and that one is done. And I'm just going to do that with all of these images and um, fast forward. My images comp has all the placeholders with all different images that transition every second. All right, then you're going to create a new composition. This composition is going to be your vertical pendulum and we're going to have that as a 1080 by 1920 with a frame rate of 120 frames per second for 30 seconds. Press OK. We're going to take our images comp and put that into our new vertical pendulum composition. I'm going to press P to open up the position property and hold down option and click this little stopwatch here to create this um, this expression. And in the description, I have the position value for um, the side to side and for the vertical. This one's going to be vertical. So the position is y equals value zero and then down to yx in bracket. I'm going to command C, copy that. And I'm going to put it in here, paste that in here, and click here. And so now it's going up and down, up and down. So what I want to do then is I want to take this and um, um, I also want to click on the rotation. So I'm going to press R on my composition and then I'm going to go back to um, this stopwatch here. Option, click, expressions up. I'm going to go back and copy and paste my rotation. Command C, click on this, Command V. And now it also rotates as it goes up and down. Um, then finally, for my, I'm gonna, for my composition, I'm pressing A to change the anchor point. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to move this up and down. I think I want this to be around 760 for my up and down motion. There we go. Everything looks good. All right, so that is our vertical pendulum. Anchor point is at 750 for this one. All right, so I'm gonna go to the side to side and I am going to, um, I'm going to add in my images comp right there. And again, the same thing, press P, option click, 
And then we're going to paste in the um, position value expression from the side to side position value y all the way down to the brackets x, y. Command C and Command V. That is in. All right, so now it's going to move side to side. And we got to do the rotation now. So let's go ahead and click on the images comp, press R, option click, and back to the rotation from T equals time down to Y, command C, and back on for our rotation. So now it's going to go back and forth, and we have to change the, the anchor point. So images comp A, and now we're just going to bring the anchor point down to where? It's a little, I think it works right there. Let's write that one image. Yeah. All right. So now, last thing, if you want to edit some of this stuff, like let's say you want to have a larger swing on that on the um, side to side. What you need to do is go back to your position property expression. Click inside here and then change next to A, where it says, right now it says A100. We can change that to 300. And what that's gonna do is it's going to make this a larger swing back and forth, okay? And then to really amplify it, let's just do 1,000. Or 1,300, okay, so now it's gonna go back and forth way back and forth every second. See that? So change that amplitude uh, to something that you like. I prefer it just a little, just subtle enough. And I think that works, especially when we speed it up. Also, same with rotation. If you want to change the expression uh, under where it says A, change that amplitude. Um, the more you do, uh, the higher the number, the more of um, the effect is going to play. All right, so now that is saved. Here we go. So we have a vertical pendulum up and down and the side to side pendulum back and forth. And uh, so now we just render it. File, save as, let's go, I'm sorry, file, uh, composition. We're gonna add to render queue for our vertical pendulum and our side to side pendulum, add to render queue. Render that out and you're almost done. Okay, so now that those are done, I have saved in here my audio file for the pendulum effect. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to import those two videos that I just saved. Um, so the side to side pendulum and the vertical pendulum, I'm gonna put those in here. And I'm going to, let's just start with the side to side. All right, so I'm in Premiere Pro and here's my composition settings or my sequence settings for this composition. Um, I have a 30 frames per second, roughly. 1080 by 1920, press OK. I've imported my side-to-side -side pendulum and my vertical pendulum, and I put the side-to-side -side pendulum inside here. And right now, this is going back and forth every second. We need to change that so that it matches up with the audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and select on the timeline the side-to-side -side pendulum. I'm gonna right-click that and scroll down here to where it says Scene Edit Detection. I'm going to apply a cut at each detected cut point. Yes, Analyze. And here we have Scene Edit Detection has cut every second a clip, except for, oh, it looks like we missed one part right here, right there. Could not detect that one clip cut. So we're gonna go ahead and press C clean that up, it's been cut, and now we're good to go. All right, so first things first, let's option, let's scroll in here, let's make this a little bit easier to work with. And if I listen to just the music here, the first, first one's gonna be right here. So we want the clip to cut right here on this bell. So if I take a look, I'm at four frames in, I want to also right click that first one, that first clip, I'm gonna to go to speed duration. And instead of changing the percentage, I'm gonna to go to duration. And I'm gonna actually change the duration to four frames, just like that. And I'm gonna ripple edit trailing, I'm sorry. And then I'm gonna select this right here where it says ripple edit shifting trailing clips. What the heck? I cannot read. 
So I'm just gonna select this box here. It says Ripple Edit. Click on that, and then what it's gonna do is gonna slide everything down. So that first one, it's going to speed up to that to that cut. And then right here again, we're at 0.9, which is about five frames further. So we're gonna do five frames for this one. Speed duration, five frames. Ripple edit, okay, there we go. And then the next one, right here. And from nine to 13, we're about four frames in. Speed duration and four frames. So you're gonna do this at every cut where that bell is. And then I'll meet you at the end. Let's see what we got. So if you can see, I'm at 22 frame or 23 frames is where I made that cut. But every second is at 29 frames or 30 frames, right? So what I have to do then is to make this one, I have to think about that I made this cut at 23. That means I did seven frames to get to here plus another 12 frames to get to there. So we're at 19 frames roughly. So we'll go ahead and make speed duration. We're gonna make this at 19 frames. I did find one of the little tricks I've done is I kind of made my cuts just prior to the sound as much as I can. Um, and then I have the time code here. I'll just play, put it on here, just pause and uh, take a look based on this sound here. And let's just run through. All right, so there's that. We'll go to File, Export media and then um, we'll do bells all one and I'm going to save that to my tutorial folder save and we'll export that and um, then we will um, you know what you, now now that you have it here what you can do is you can go back into After Effects and you can change out all the images. And let's just do that. Let's go to, um, let's just assume that we go to the, um, this, and I'm going to select A. And uh, so I selected A, we'll go to the left bracket. I'm just going to move these images around here and just put them in different orders. Uh, let's put the one here. All right, so basically these are just now in different order. All right, so now that I have them in different order, I'm going to go select A to, I'm sorry, command A to select all of them. And then I'm going to go to keyframe assistant, sequence layers, press OK. Now we have a whole set of new images in different order. Okay, we're going to add the uh, side to side to the render queue. Add to render queue. And all I'm going to do is render this out as the same exact file that I used in my prim Premium Pro, Premiere Pro. So side to side pendulum, save that, replace that one, render, press OK. Once that renders out, we'll go back into Premiere Pro and see what happens. Okay, so it's completed. We're gonna go back into Premiere Pro and back to the um, beginning. And as you can see, our clips are already imported as a linked linked clips with sped the they're sped up and and clipped exactly where we want them. So I think that's my favorite part about this is that now I essentially have an unlimited amount of images that I can upload and place in here and I automatically have this template set up and I do not have to redo any of things, uh, uh, any, any cuts or anything like I do, would in uh, CapCut. So let's go to File, uh, Export, and now I will just save this export as a separate. as a separate um, video file. 
And let's take a look at the um, Bells one. I like it, it's smooth. Let's go to Bells 2. And it's a totally different video. Now you can change that up and uh, make it however you like. And that's uh, the pendulum effect. If you found no value at all in this video, please tell me about it in the comment section. If you did find value, please like, subscribe, and let me know about it in the comment section. Thank you. See you later.